Hello everyone and welcome to my permit plunder guide. If you're like me, not a fan of training thieving through blackjacking or you just want to improve your game doing permit plunder or this is your first time doing permit plunder, I think I can help you out. So let's see what's on the menu today. I will talk about the requirements that you need to do permit plunder, how you can get there, what equipment you can use and what the experience rates are per hour. Then I will shortly address the rewards that the minigame offers and I will show you how you can do the minigame itself. For those of you who just want to see some parts of the guide, I will link it down below in the description so that you can easily navigate throughout the guide. The Pyramid Plunder minigame comes with very little requirements. You need to start the Itklerin's little helper quest to have access to the city of Sofenim. If you want bank access in the city of Sofenim, you have to complete the contact quest. This is a very recommended requirement actually if you want to speed up your trips and also you can complete the feud if you want cheaper carpet rides. If you want free carpet rides you can complete the Desert Heart Diary and if you're a lower level and you use prayer throughout the Pyramid Plunder minigame you have to complete any of the Erdoin Diaries so that you can teleport to the monastery very quickly and restore your prayer points over there. Skilling wise you need 21 thieving to access the first room of the pyramid plunder minigame however it's recommended to have 71 or higher because lower level gives you access to less rooms meaning your experience per hour will drop quite significantly and making other methods therefore more viable or more efficient to train thieving. Also note that boosts don't work to go to higher rooms so you need the actual level to enter the room that you want to plunder. Getting to the mini game is fairly easy, you can either use carpet rides, you can use a ferro scepter to teleport right in front of the pyramid, or you can use your desert amulet, uh, the elite version, to teleport to Narda and then run all the way to the pyramid itself. If you're using carpet rides, first of all you travel to the shanty pass, which you can get to by using a ring of dueling and traveling to the jewel arena, or using an amulet of glory and traveling to Al Karit. Once you're at the Chanty Pass, you take the carpet right to Polovanich, then you arrive at Polovanich in the north of it, travel south, take another carpet ride right to Sofenim, you arrive at Sofenim and from there on you can walk to the pyramid itself. As you can see, you take three carpet rides per trip you go there. If you have banking possibilities inside of Sofenim, this is not really a big money drain, but if you're doing the trips over and over again and you don't have the bank access in Sofenim, you will spend a little bit of money also just out of pure convenience it is just nice to complete the desert heart diary and take the carpet rides for free for the equipment i will be showing the setup that i personally prefer to use so you should be wearing weight reducing gear to keep your run energy as long as possible as high as possible i use full graceful you can swap it out with boots of lightness and the spot your cape or any kind of other weight reducing gear for the anti-poison you can use antidotes plus plus or a serpentine helm I use the antidotes because I don't want to waste my skills on the poison in the pyramid. I bring two antidotes plus plus because each dose gives me about res uh, poison resistance between 10 to 12 minutes, which will last me for 16 trips with two antidotes. At which point in time, I will be banking anyway for more food. Then you will need to bring food to restore from all the filled loots or the scarabs or the remaining zombies inside of the rooms. I also bring one or two stamina potions to restore my energy if I run out. I rarely do, but I still bring them that if I do, I can restore my run energy anyway. Another alternative would be that I can restore my run energy during my banking trip. So you restore your run energy to 100% each time you bank. Also, I did not bring it in this inventory. You should bring an emergency teleport because the pyramid, if you die there, all items you drop will be lost permanently. So it's not a safe death, as I should call it. So bring the emergency teleport if you're a lower level or you have low HP. I never have to use it, but you know what they say, better be safe than sorry. Besides the setup that I just showed, you can also bring some additional equipment. If you, for example, are a lower level and you are protecting from melee against the monsters, you can bring some prayer potions to extend your trips. Uh, I also saw some lower level using uh, defensive armor against the uh, zombies or the scarabs that spawn from the chests. You can also recharge your health if you use a prayer book and a holy symbol. It will consume some prayer, but it will save you some food over time. If you are able to wear an HP cape or get your hands on a regen bracelet, you can do that. Your health will regenerate uh, twice the rate as it normally does. You can also bring a lockpick, which will increase the 
chance of picking the locks of the doors to go to the next room but it will decrease your xp per hour so personally not a fan of it but you can bring it if you want to speed up your trips also if you don't have banking opportunity inside of sofanum you will need your traveling equipment to go to the chante pass bring your ring of dueling your amulet of glory these are all things you should consider depending on what kind of trips you're planning to do in the experience per hour you will notice that there's a big difference because of the rooms that you can plunder at certain levels at around 71 to 81 you reach 100 to 110k per hour at 81 it boosts up to around 200k per hour and at 91 plus you reach around 250 to 265k per hour making it a very viable method to go to 99. The reason why I recommended 71 is because of these experience rates but you see between 61 and 71 you can also reach up to 80 to 90k per hour. Going lower than that I would not recommend it I don't really know the experience rates for that but I think there are better methods to do it at lower levels so you should at least have between 61 or 71 to do this method. And finally, before jumping into the minigame itself, there are two main drops that the minigame is offering, one being the Pharaoh's Scepter, which has a drop rate of 1 in 1000 for each gold chest you loot, or each sarcophagus that you loot. Also, you receive statuettes, scarabs, and other kind of stuff from the urns that you're looting. You can turn them in at Simon Templeton at the Agility Pyramid. Personally, I never do this, but if you're interested, I found on the wiki this table with the gold coins that you receive if you turn in these artifacts at Simon Templeton. The minigame itself is quite simple. To start it you need to locate the mummy inside the temple which can be in either of the four available entrances. Once you have located the mummy you can start the minigame. Be aware that on random points in time the mummy moves location and you will have to relocate them again. When you have started the minigame you will be teleported inside the temple. This is when your 5 minute timer starts before you are kicked out. Depending on your thieving level, you will be able to enter X amount of rooms. For example, at my level, which is 80, I can only go as far as 6 rooms. This means, to gain the maximum amount of experience per hour, I will only loot room 5 and 6 completely. The rest of the rooms I only loot the gold chest for a potential chance at the scepter. The first thing you need to do in each room is to disarm the spike traps at the entrance. You can do this by clicking on the first set of traps. If you click on the second one, you will automatically bounce back as the first set is hitting you. If you don't fill the trap, you can start completing the room. If you fill the trap, just try again. Once you have completed the room, you will look for the next room by picklocking the doors on the wall. If it is the correct door, you will automatically be teleported to the next room. If you reach your second to last room, there are a few important things to keep in mind. First of all, don't loot the ghoul chest in the middle right away. This because if you fill it, a swarm of scarabs will spawn and attack you during the plundering of the rest of the room. This damage can drain your food supplies quite fast and reduce your amount of trips before banking. The other thing to keep in mind is your clock. If you fail a lot of your attempts to loot the urns or had some delay in finding the next room in the other rooms, it might be beneficial to move on to the next room if you're running low on time. This is because the last room will give you more experience rather than completing the room and running out of time in your last one. Finally, when you've reached the last room, you do the same as in the previous room. If you're at risk of running out of time, just loot the gold chest in the middle and continue until you're kicked out. In a better case, when you have spare time, you can quick leave by the white door on the wall. Finally, once your supplies has run out, you can bank inside of Sofenum. After you have completed the contact quest, you can bank at this location in the dungeon. So after you are outside of the pyramid, just move to the east. There you will find a ladder which you can climb down. This is the broken altar from the contact quest. You move down and this is where the bank is located and you can restock up on supplies. And that's all you need to know for Pyramid Plunder. As you can see it's not a very difficult minigame, it's just knowing the small mechanics that are there and knowing how to get the most experience per hour. Also a big recommendation from my side is to do this on mobile. You can do this while chilling behind the TV or while you're laying in bed. This is also something that I enjoyed personally to do. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys all for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed this guide. If you did, you can drop a like, give me some feedback in the comment section below. If you want to support my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you guys all next time. Have a nice day. Cheers.